Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Produce Moms Podcast. What a joy it is to connect with you all on a Monday. We are here with a special edition episode. We are celebrating National Fruits and Veggie Month. Uh, Hey, this month, this celebration, it was started by Produce for Better Health Foundation. And you all are familiar with Produce for Better Health Foundation because back in the archives, episode 52, we uh, showcased the Have a Plant movement and the launch of that great initiative with our stellar guest. Wendy Reinhardt Kapsik. She is back today. She is the president and CEO of Produce for Better Health Foundation. She's a celebrated registered dietitian throughout the really the world, and she's one of my dear friends. So, Wendy, welcome to the show. We're glad you're here, and what a great day to celebrate all things PBH and have a plant. Thank you, Lori. It's such a great pleasure to be with you and, and your audience. Um, you're right. September is National Fruits and Veggies Month. And for those that might have remembered previous Produce for Better Health or PBH campaigns, some may know this as Fruits and Veggies More Matters Month. And so that More Matters was a previous call to action. As you noted, we changed um, that call to action to have a plant to be more relevant to today's consumers and, um, and also to inspire actual emotion associated with the fruit and vegetable eating experience. Um, National Fruits and Veggies Month, we wanted to make the main thing like the main thing. Mm -hmm. So therefore, National Fruits and Veggies Month is really this month-long celebration of this year, all things fruits and veggies, and we can go through that in a moment, but it also is serving to elevate fruit and vegetable consumption and new fruit and vegetable consumption behaviors as a national priority. And so what we would say at PBH is, and this is a little dramatic, is we're facing as a nation a fruit and vegetable consumption crisis. In fact, it's a chronic crisis and it's affecting our society it's affecting our culture and it's affecting our economy. Mm -hmm. And this has only been further illuminated with um, the global pandemic that we're facing. And you say it's dramatic, but it really isn't. It's just the doggone truth. I mean, our consumption is our consumption here in the United States is in the tank and it's, it's worse with fruits and vegetables than any other food. I mean, we're talking like, I, I, Wendy, you probably know the data better than I do, but it's around 90% of Americans aren't eating the recommended amounts of fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. You are, you're absolutely right. And um, you also bring kind of the disparity even with Americans' consumptions of, let's say, other healthful food groups as well. For example, dairy is considered a food group of concern, but even still, Fruits and vegetables, the disparity between recommendations and what we're actually consuming, it's the largest or the most. The biggest the gap. Yeah. Biggest gap. And yet and at the same time, what a paradox because it's the healthiest thing we can put into our bodies. I know. Yeah. I know. And so what we've been kind of, I think, you know, as somebody that's newer to the fruit and vegetable industry and also to, you know, I've spent the last three and a half years at PBH prior to that worked in the vegetable seed business, but still I'm learning so very much. Here's the challenge or here's the opportunity. It's really an opportunity for the fruit and veggie loving public, along with the fruit and veggie industry to come together collectively and elevate fruit and vegetable consumption behaviors as a national priority. This idea that PBH could serve as a catalyst for convening all of us who are so passionate about fruits and vegetables to elevate uh, with one voice this really important call to action around eating more. And in our case with PBH, we're, we're of course, focused on have a plan. That's right. But you've also... uh 
developed some unique partnerships this month. Uh, well, really partnerships that PBH has had that are longstanding, but you're, you're showcasing these partnerships in a unique way this month. Specifically, I'm thinking about the work that PBH is doing with FMI, the Food Marketing Institute. Why don't you share a little bit more with our listeners on that? Yeah, this is so fabulous. So um, FMI or the Feed Marketing Institute also has a foundation. It's called the FMI Foundation. And they are very focused on family meals. And much like PBH, they had a movement um, and it started out as a month. And so it was National Families Meals Month also takes place in September. And there was an inkling that various research was saying, you know, people just eat healthier meals when they eat them together as a family. Mm -hmm. And they also benefit from the connection um, of family and conversations do, as they say, happen around the dinner table and particularly conversations with kids and in some cases, um, risky behaviors, whether, you know, they might be considering, you know, your aunt, how much time you spend in online, for example, doing games and such versus, you know, connecting and communicating and building social skills or other, other important topics do, you know, there's great conversations that take place around the table. So this was in super intriguing to us. And we developed a very close relationship and partnership with the FMI foundation, Um, We're showcasing that again this year. In fact, this month, um, as National Fruits and Veggies Month, we'll have four kind of key themes throughout the month. The first one here um, is National Family Meals Month and National Fruits and Veggies Month. And both of these months now are really a movement because they're relevant every day. The inkling that consumers or families eat healthier with family meals was solidified with a large comprehensive scientific review that was looking at all the important measures or outcomes associated, particularly when people eat together as a family. And what they realized or what they were really solidified was that in fact, yes, consumers did two things from a dietary perspective. They decreased their consumption of let's say sugar, 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 sweetened beverages. Mm -hmm. Um, and they increased their fruit and vegetable consumption. Those were the two most significant, um, dietary changes and the most positive one being increasing fruit and vegetable consumption. They also benefited from psychological measures of connectedness. And, um, and so those are very important too, particularly in a time like this where, um, yeah. Connectivity and health are really top of mind. For now, sure. yeah. make one, one additional comment. Some people might be saying to themselves, even some of the people like listening right now, oh my gosh, if I have to have one more meal with my family, I might, I might <laughs> want to eat by myself. Yeah. <laughs> Can I go eat? Um, but really there's the, the theme this month for them really is staying strong with family meals. And so, you know, really this idea of encouragement keep going with family meals. If you're having any, you know, um, people will talk about meal fatigue. There are lots of resources online, including let's just say the produce moms as an excellent one, including yeah. also fruits and veggies. We can help you through this. We can get through this. We're in it together, but staying strong with family meals is important for you. It's important for your family and your family's health and connectedness, whatever your family may look like right now. And also um, you're really doing a lot to support the economy because Mm -hmm. every fruit and vegetable you put on your plate, there was somebody that was growing that there was someone that was transporting it. There was someone that was putting it either, um, you know, in your, in your online shopping cart or in your real shopping cart. Um, and it's making its way on your, on your plate and it's contributing to your health and happiness. So staying strong with family meals is really important. Yeah, it is important. And I think that, you know, I've said it before in the podcasts and, and many of the episodes that have published since, you know, March. And that's been, it, it, you know, this has been absolute, uh, it's been a devastating uh, impact on the on the whole world, the pandemic. But uh, I guess the one silver lining is families are coming together around the kitchen table in a way that we haven't seen here in, the, in America in the last two, three decades. You know, it's... Uh, it's definitely brought people back together for those family meals. So I'm glad to see uh, the organizations continuing to encourage folks with that. It's, it's really important. And of course, anything that we can do, Wendy, to support more fruits and vegetables. Uh, that being said, what's, uh, let's remind folks what Have a Plant is all about. 
Yeah. Have a plan is really, um, a way to connect emotionally with the fruit and vegetable eating experience. And it's really our, what we would say our consumer and influencer facing movement um, that really is meant to inspire action. So um, the research behind have a plan really bit uh, builds on behavioral principles that you need to make. If you want people to do something, you got to make it easy. And there's this continuum of behavior change. If we thought about it just a little differently, it's, it's what do you know? Well, everybody knows fruits and vegetables are healthy for them. And so maybe right. that's actually what in our favor right now. Um, people need to feel this emotional connection mm -hmm. and emotions are super powerful. And the good news is there's a lot of research to demonstrate that um, fruits and vegetables are really food rooted in a better mood. This idea that they can contribute to joy and pride and feelings of accomplishment. There are so many emotions for us to choose from when we're encouraging people to eat more fruits and vegetables. And so understanding what's going to speak to them in that moment, that eating occasion, we have have so many um, plays to make on the field when it comes to using emotion to encourage fruit and vegetable consumption. And then the last one after know and feel is do. And what we find is that root if we want to establish long-term um, and hopefully new fruit and vegetable consumption behaviors, we need to have a positive experience that we want to continue to repeat over and over again, that mm -hmm. then turn becomes routine and it becomes almost automatic. And so this means at every turn, whether you're a mom just trying to feed, uh, you know, your family healthy fruits and vegetables or all the way back, even let's say at the seed level, how are we making it easy for consumers to select, store, serve, savor, fruits and vegetables every single day at every meal occasion. That's, that's what it's going to take to really um, bridge that intention action gap and um, essentially the consumption gap that we see with fruits and vegetables. That's right. So have, yeah. So have a plant is, is, is really about, um, you know, all of those tap, things <laughs> yeah, it is, tapping into that emotional experience. And here's the good news. Actually, a lot of the types of work, Lori, that you do and that PBH is focused on around online conversation. And I think in this global pandemic, um, we've seen a lot of people turning to online sources like yours for inspiration mm -hmm. is there's a lot of research to back up the importance of online digital conversations. So have a plant is also a consumer facing call to action that folks want to align with. And um, they see that it mirrors their values and then they want to share it outward, which means we're also tapping into the advocacy that particularly millennials and Gen Zs are so very interested and accustomed to just doing. Mm -hmm. um, and we see that with other causes as well. That's right. And this month for National Fruits and Veggies Month, PBH has formalized a Have a Plant Pledge. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So, so, you know, gosh, if we could get everybody to just, you know, bridge, um, their, their, um, intention action back gap, like, and eat at least five fruits and vegetable servings every single day, that would be amazing. Um, but we need to make it easy. We need to make it attainable. So the have a plant pledge is really about just putting a little bit of a stake in the ground here, maybe even holding yourself accountable or watching others online or just putting it out there and saying, I'm really going to make an effort to eat at least one more fruit and or vegetable every single day. Mm -hmm. And this is the start of that, hopefully trial, um, behavior and then hopefully there's a positive experience that's associated with that. So that that's for people like you and I, um, Lori, to make it easy and um, delicious and people want to repeat that. And then um, hopefully that one more serving might turn into a few others. But for this month, can we make can we make a pledge mm -hmm. um, to eat, eat, eat at least one more? Some people are taking this to the extreme. They're saying, I'll eat one more at every meal or mm -hmm. snack that's unbelievable. Um, and it's amazing. Yeah. So, um, 
be on the lookout for that. So you can um, take the pledge. You can go to fruitsandveggies.org and see what it's about. You can download um, a visual that you can then uh, put essentially on your digital and or social channels to kind of put it out there. And then maybe um, you have somebody who wants to keep you accountable or a group of people that that you can uh, share your experiences with. And certainly online um, through fruitsandveggies.org um, and all of our channels, um, there's going to be a lot of inspiration happening online. You can use have a plant, hashtag have a plant, hashtag have a plant pledge. And then for National Fruits and Veggies Month, hashtag um, NFVM 2020. And so um, when you do that, you're going to see or use or search for those hashtags, you're going to see a lot of great inspiration online. Yeah, definitely. And it's, uh, it's one attainable thing that we can all do to make our lives better eat more fruits and vegetables. I, you know, it, it's, it's really the premises of what we do at the produce moms. And it's such a pleasure for me to, uh, support organizations like produce for better health foundation and learn from, you know, leaders like Wendy, uh, it's, you know, it, it's going to take many voices and many efforts and many platforms to close that gap that we were talking about at the top of the show. We want everyone to eat more fruits and vegetables. Yes, of course, it's good for business. It's good for the growers that we know and love at the produce moms, but for sure, it's good for you. It's good for your health. And it's really good for the world because a healthy person is a happy person. That's right. Yep. You got it. You got it. And we're so grateful to the produce moms for all you do and the great content that you share that's making it easy, um, accessible, attainable, and then delicious. Um, so what you do is really important, Lori. Thanks, Wendy. So with that, uh, it's time to kind of wrap things up today. And I thought a really cool way to close out the conversation would be for you and I both to leave everyone with us today with, with one thing we want them to know about fruits and vegetables. So I'll go first because our tradition is like, Hey, the guest gets the final word in the hot seat. Things haven't changed Wendy since episode, <laughs> since episode 52 when you were with us before, but I'll go first. What I want everyone to know is that all fruits and vegetables are good for you. And when you're choosing a fruit or a vegetable, you are making an excellent choice. I want everyone to know that fruits and vegetables are food rooted in a better mood. And right now, um, when health is top of mind, that's an all inclusive and it includes um, both our physical health, but also our mental health. And so you're right, Lori, you're making a great choice that people, you can feel really proud about. Um, you're really doing the best for yourself and your family. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a produce mom in you because there's a produce mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time.